In this video, I will show you how to design a stairway that would look something like this. Uh, three foot one landings. The Remember the stair building code, most of them for residential stairs is three foot. You might want to go a little longer. 10 inch treads. 36 inches is the minimum for the um, width of the stairs. So we can make them 37 inches. That might help us out, especially when we drywall something. Just throwing it out there. And in case you're trying to figure out just how in the heck this works, let's go ahead and take a look at it here. So we're going to go up three steps, landing three steps, and then the second floor. So no mystery there. The uh, miracle has been solved there if you're wondering where in the heck it's going to start and where it's going to stop. So when you look at that on a floor plan, sometimes it's going to be confusing, but the architect would probably draw a start and a end line in there, something to give you an idea, or at least an elevation, something that would help with the solve the mystery there. So again, three steps up, another three steps to the landing, and I believe this set of stairs has 16 risers. So if you don't need, if that's going to be too many risers for you, I have a solution for that in the next example. Again, the headroom is going to be here. You're going to get the headroom. Let's go back. You're going to get the headroom in here from cantilever in the joist or maybe even putting a post here or a post here with a support beam something like that so not a problem to uh, build something like this with a cantilever or with a post and uh, beam type of system and some joist hangers and in this example i just went ahead and removed one step so this is going to give us 15 risers let's go ahead and count them one two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. So two steps and the rest have three steps. A view from above. I'm not going to have a problem here with the headroom, what it would look like on the floor plan. Now let's go ahead and remove another step. So again, the stairway is probably going to be starting right here, going up. And this one here, of course, would have 14 risers. And that might be more of a beneficial stairway for a set of stairs that would be used in a building with 2 by 12 floor joist three quarter inch floor sheathing and an eight foot ceiling. So two, three, two, and then three. And again, you can see here, if I needed to get rid of another step, I could take one out of here. I could take another one out of here to have two steps all the way up, two steps up, two steps, and two steps if that's what I wanted instead of two, three, two, and three. And hopefully that makes sense. Now next up, let's take a look at a different design where we will take a look at a few different ways you might be able to spruce up your winder or curved stairs by putting some curves in them. And of course, some of the reasons why you might not be able to, to put certain types of curves in there, including this one here. If you remember, we have a minimum of six inches for the inside area of a winder stairway. And you're probably thinking, oh, wait a minute, now it's a circular stairway. Either way, six inches is probably going to apply to both of those. But uh, here it is, we've got a little curve on the inside and the curve is coming from here. This would be the center point and then we draw our circle. As long as this meets the minimum, building code requirements for your area. You would be able to do something like this. So you could always, if you wanted to do something like this, you could always move this set of stairs this way and this one this way a little bit and then uh, make the winders a little larger and then you wouldn't have a problem with that. And you'll see a little bit more of that later on in the video. On the outside, this wouldn't be a problem either because usually the outside, it doesn't have a minimum. The inside does. Outside doesn't have a minimum. We also have a walk line that we would need to um, take into consideration when designing a stairway like this. And I think I'll put a link here or in the video description area. And again, you can always look that up. Walk line for winder stairs. And I, I already have a video on that if for some reason I don't get to that. But the width of the stairway usually has a minimum and on a residential set of stairs it's going to be 36 inches 
So if I was to do something like this, I'm not going to have a problem. I'm just going to measure from here to here, make sure that it is above the minimum, 36 inches. I think what I have here is 38 inches, not going to be a problem. You would end up with something like this. Take a look at it as after it was built. Be something like this here. Not a bad design, kind of crossing over between whether it's going to be a circular or a winder stairway. But I do both of them. You might uh, want to just have one on the outside. You might just want to have it on the inside. And another idea would be to just curve this area here. Now, if you notice this one here, I use this as the center point. And over here, I use this one here as a center point to get this curve. But this curve doesn't look that good. You know, it doesn't. And you can see there's not that much of a difference just going out a few inches in the curve. But we can take and change that by doing something like this. Just simply drawing a line from the step. And you don't have to follow this. You can go a little further out or a little closer. But this one right here is going to give you a nice curved shape that's going to blend in if you use a center point here and you're just going to be coming off of here parallel to this line and then this one here will be parallel off of this one from both of these points draw your curve in there and of course this one like i said finishes off a little nicer especially if it's up against a wall something like this would look nice and again this is kind of what i saw that inspired the video. Something else you might consider would be to simply connect the dots here and create a couple of angled sections in the wall. Something like this. Here's what it would look like after it was built. Now I do need to point out that uh, if you have a nosing or um, some type of a tread overhang you might need to re-modify the steps if you want the nosing to line up with these points here. So here we have a set of stairs where the there's no nosing on it. The riser is flat and no overhang. A lot of times we have a one inch overhang. If that's the case, you're going to need to move the risers back the length of the overhang. One inch overhang, going to need to move the risers back one inch so that the overhang dies in here. But you might actually want the riser to die into the corner and then have an overhang. That would be up to you, personal preference there, just pointing it out. I know it's a big mistake stair builders make. They go and they lay everything out and they build everything to this and then they add risers to it. They might add finished materials, uh, some, you know, one by fours, one by six, um, one by eights for the risers and then put a nosing on it and then add materials and then pretty soon they're uh, you know two inches away from this corner and the stairway doesn't look as nice. And in our last example here I wanted to give you an idea of what might happen to the winder steps at the farthest point on the inside when you go with a longer curve. And of course, you're going to lose the minimum here. So instead of having six inches, we end up with about two inches, if that. So this, again, can be corrected if we move this section a little further this way and this section a little further this way so that we can um, have everything work out on this side. And that might actually make the stairway a little wider in some cases or uh, even uh, create a situation to where you might just want to use two steps, two steps instead of three steps for your winder. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area.